Yeah. My brothers and sisters in the Lord, Jesus in his Sermon on the Mount holds his disciples to a higher moral standard. He says in the Gospel that it's not enough just to obey the Ten Commandments, but he gives us the Beatitudes, which present an even higher moral standard than what was observed by the Jewish people. For example, for Jesus, it's not enough just to refrain from killing, but to respect all human life. It's not enough just to avoid adultery. He calls us to be pure in heart and in mind, to be people of the highest integrity in all that we do. And Jesus says that whoever obeys and teaches these commandments that he gives will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. This higher moral standard challenges us then in our choices each and every day to diligently obey and to keep the commandments. And the choice is quite clear. It's a choice for life or death, for good or evil. And when the choice is made in Christ for life, for good, we must do so with all of our hearts and be firm in our ways of keeping the Beatitudes of the Lord. When we make the choice for what is good and pure and beautiful, as painful as it may be at the time, in the end it always brings good and truthfulness, life and happiness. The release of the Philadelphia Grand Jury Report on the sexual abuse of minors this past Thursday reminds us that on occasion, Christians, and yes, even bishops and priests, do not always hold this higher moral standard. Choices are not made in Christ, and indeed are sinful choices. And so Jesus teaches in his sermon that whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. God never gives us the command or the permission to act unjustly, nor the license to sin, so the book of Sirach told us in our first reading this morning. Those priests and others who acted unjustly and sinned gravely by abusing children inflicted on them a lifetime of pain. These are the sinful choices of a few that affect all of us who belong to Christ and to his church. The effects of such sinful choices are far-reaching in the hurt and confusion they cause. Those suffering the most, of course, are victims of sexual abuse. And then we see Jesus suffering in our midst, just as Mary, model of the church, embraced her crucified son. So we, as a church, must embrace all victims with our love, compassion, and concern. But they are not the only victims. As Catholics, we are all hurt and confused, and perhaps even quite angry, and we feel betrayed. Many of you suffer in solidarity with your priests who serve you so faithfully, for we ourselves are suffering deeply from the sins of our brothers. The Word of God, especially on this Sunday morning, helps us to answer the questions of many resulting from the grand jury report. Even in this difficult moment for the community of the Church, the eyes of God are upon us, and He continues to instruct us. We are to, we are to continue to trust in Him, and we will live. We are to continue to be steadfast in observing the laws of the Lord, the Scriptures tell us, because in the end, they are His laws and not the laws of men. Concretely, we must continue to extend ourselves to the victims of abuse in prayer, charity, and justice. We must intercede for all the members of the Church that we may never fail to do all we can to prevent abuse and to protect our dear children. We must also remember that the priesthood, in the end, belongs to Christ, who is the true priest. And the sinful actions of a few cannot compromise the integrity of the priesthood. Our fidelity to Christ and the way of life He offers us through the ministry of the priesthood in His Church demands our constant yes. The sins of some priests and some priest leaders never allows us to walk away from the high moral standards to which we have been called in today's Gospel. For each of us personally, this is an occasion then for the renewed faith and hope in the Lord's presence and in His victory over sin. It's time for all of us to hear the Lord's Gospel call again to a higher moral standard in thought and deed, both bishops, priests, and laity alike. You see, we're not alone. We do not follow the Lord alone. 
We do so together as members of his church, his body. And so now, as always, we need to encourage one another in Christ, especially those who are afflicted and confused at this time. I know from when this issue of the sexual abuse of minors was raised before, some of the questions people ask me is, Monsignor, so what is the church doing now to change? What can we tell people in our family or around the water cooler at work to show that the Catholic Church still has integrity, that the Catholic Church still speaks for Jesus, and to tell those who are considering leaving the church or distancing themselves from it to stay with us? It's important to remember that the allegations that have come forward in this second grand jury report, like the other ones, are abuses that took place prior to the comprehensive and far-reaching changes made by the bishops of the United States in 2003. In the Charter for the Protection of Children and Young People, the United States Catholic bishops mandated the establishment of a safe environment program in every diocese. The safe environment program is comprehensive not only educating and guiding adults who oversee children, but also providing young people with an age-appropriate personal safety curriculum. It also mandated ways to audit the compliance of dioceses and all priests in the active ministry with the observance of standards of ministerial behavior and boundaries that are applicable not only to priests in ministry, but to every seminarian contemplating the priesthood. Likewise, the screening and the review of seminarians preparing for the priesthood is more intense and careful like never before, perhaps in the history of the Church. In the weeks ahead, I will continue to follow up with providing you information in our bulletin as to what else the Archdiocese is doing in response to the Grand Jury Report, and to give you an opportunity to read firsthand the details of our Archdiocesan Safe Environment Program for our children. The Cardinal has asked us to mention his response to one assertion in this week's Grand Jury Report that he feels must be addressed immediately. The Grand Jury Report states that there remain in ministry archdiocesan priests who have credible allegations of abuse against them at the current time. Cardinal Vergali says, I assure all of the faithful that there are no archdiocesan priests in active ministry today who have an admitted or established allegation of sexual abuse of a minor against them. As far as St. B. the Venerable Parish goes, I want to assure you that we are 100% compliant with all of the demands of the Safe Environment Program, and we continue to do all that we can to ensure that a safe environment exists for all of our children, so that they will be truly led to Jesus in the fullest and safest way possible. I encourage you to join me and all priests as we come together to, to Jesus today, especially by our reception of Holy Communion. He sustains us, the whole church. His cross and resurrection conquers all sin and gives us faith and hope which must remain strong in our hearts as we vigorously commit ourselves anew to do everything possible for the protection of all children and for the prevention of any abuse in the future. May we respond to Christ renewed in our faith and hope, ready to live anew according to his way, the highest moral standard the world has ever known. May God bless you.